a site is effectively an area of fairly homogeneous parent material, in other words, the parent rock from which the soil is weathered, climate, terrain, and soil. If we get areas that are fairly homogeneous with respect to these four features, we would classify them as a certain site type. And it follows quite clearly that, that on such a site type, we would be able to prescribe the planting of a certain genotype or species or hybrid, a specific fertilizer regime that is appropriate for that site, a specific soil management regime, a specific vegetation management regime. So you can see that the entire management system that we use in plantation forestry very strongly focuses on this concept of site. Once we can define our sites, we can also quickly understand what their limitations are and what ameliorative action will be necessary to get them to optimum productivity. But we can also understand what the risks are to sustainability. Several reasons have compelled us to make these hybrids. First of all, if we make very good hybrids, we can improve the wood quality. We can often improve disease or pest resistance and sometimes even drought resistance. It is clear that this tree is very sick. Um, we can see resin oozing down the side of the stem here. Uh, resin also known as pitch and this is uh, because of the pitch canker fungus that has attacked this tree. Pinus radiata has almost no natural resistance to the pitch canker fungus. So we sit here with a dilemma. We have a very good stand at the moment, but if this disease is going to spread, it may be difficult to continue with radiata as a pure species. We may have to replant it now with a hybrid that is more resistant to this pitch canker fungus. So site selection and matching the right species to the right site is very important and sometimes that species that we match is not a pure species, it may be a hybrid. So after we've got the stand established, it's important to do very good weed control. In other words, we manage any competing vegetation so that we can get the crop to grow. Sometimes we also apply fertilizers so that we can ensure that there are no nutrient deficiencies and that we get high productivity. After that, once the stand is established, um, we start to prune our trees in a classic plantation system and here you can see several places up the stem here where there has been had been a whirl of branches that have been pruned uh, and you can still see the marks over there where the branches used to be and up there and so this tree has been pruned for at least five meters giving it a long clear stem with very good wood properties on the outer core of this stem this is, by the way, also the area where the wood is at its densest and strongest. So this mature wood, if we can have it clear of knots, uh, we actually have a very good setup. Another thing that we will do in these plantation systems is we will thin quite intensively. Here on the ground, you can see an old stump that has been thinned when it was approximately 15 centimeters in diameter. So the thinning classically takes place from below. It means the smallest trees are removed, leaving growing space for the bigger trees to grow to the maximum of their ability. After several thinning operations and pruning operations, we then end up with a stand that have got very large diameters, like the tree on my right hand side, on my left hand side. They've got a clear trunk at the bottom, half of the trunk, the bottom third of the trunk, the so-called butt log, and at approximately 25 years of age they would be ready for harvesting. 